What's up guys? So today I'm coming to you from my garage to talk to you about packs. So I want to give you a pack review um, from the packs that I own that I've used, some ones I've checked out, and uh, just some overall tips when it comes to finding the right pack for yourself. So when it comes to a pack, there's three things I, I focus on. Number one is comfort. So a pack is one of those things that can make or break your trip. If you're miserable with your pack, uh, it just it can break your trip really quickly. So comfort is paramount. Number two is functionality. So are you backpacking? Are you uh, trying to do a lightweight overnighter? Are you going on an extended hunting trip in the backcountry? So you need to have a pack that works for you, that fits your needs, that checks all the boxes. Number three is price. Now, there's an asterisk next to price because you get what you pay for. When it comes to money, invest in a pack that's gonna work for you, that's gonna make your trip turn out the way you want it to be. So the first pack I wanna show you is the first pack I ever bought, Osprey Aether 70. The first couple packs I'm gonna show you, I've put in over 100 miles carrying these packs. I've carried animals, um, so I've, I've used them in and out. I, I know what they're all about. So this pack is a really comfortable pack. You've got a nice amount of padding on your straps, firm buckle straps so they're not gonna come loose on you, a good amount of padding here on the lower back, and your support when it comes to the carrying heavy weight on your lower back. You've got two connecting points on your hip belts, so you kind of brace the weight on the top and the bottom of your hip pad. Now this is a 70 liter, so it's not a really big pack, so you might could do you know, three days or so packing really light with this pack. Now, I bought this pack with the idea of going hunting with it, and that was a mistake, and I'll tell you why. And it goes to number two of my three keys for picking out the right pack, functionality. Now, while this is a great backpacker's pack, and I would highly recommend it, this pack retails for 250 to 300. It's lightweight, so you're looking at around five and a half pounds for this size of pack. This is an extra large. The frame weight just can't hold an animal plus gear. It's rated for about 50 pounds. Also, when it comes to functionality, your side pockets. Now, normally on a hunting pack, you're gonna have your spotting scope pockets here on the sides. Well, on these backpacking packs, these are like for trekking poles, water bottles, or just light things you put on the outside. There's no um, enclosed pocket here. It's just an open elastic pocket and it's the same on both sides. The other thing is you don't have meat storage. If you have a small budget and you're looking to buy a hunting pack and you're looking at backpacking packs, just know you're not gonna have a place to put your meat if you get an animal. So the first time I killed an animal in, with this pack, all my meat went into this main pocket and there's no breathability. So you run the, the risk of, especially if you're hunting early season archery, especially here in California, uh, it's hot. So you run the risk of spoiling your meat with it in this enclosed pocket. Other than that, I have no complaints about this pack. Um, it was within a decent budget. It's pretty lightweight. Uh, it holds a decent amount and it was comfortable. It's just not a hunting pack. Now, when it comes to backpacking, this is the pack I'll take. All right, next up is the Tenzing TZ6000. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with this pack. I hate it, and I'm gonna love getting rid of it. So, first let me tell you about the good. There are a few good things. The storage is great. There's all kinds of pockets for just what you need. You've got your spotting scope pockets here on the side. And here in the front of the pack, is your quick access to your smaller items without having to open up your whole pack. So that's a cool feature. And then if you wanna access your main pouch without opening your top, you can access it from the front as well. So that's a cool feature. And of course your, your pouch here at the bottom for your bag or whatever you wanna put in there, your head pouch. Um, all right, let's jump into the things I hate. So first of all, this pack is extremely heavy. It's about seven and a half pounds as it sits right now with the head pouch and everything on it. Just way too heavy for what's supposed to be a backpacking hunting trip. I have hauled out animals and it does handle weights. So right here you can see this is your access point for your meat pouch. You zip these down, your pack expands away from the frame and your meat goes between the frame and the pack. These straps are just pathetic. So there's no padding and 
when I've had heavy weight on this pack, it just digs into my shoulders and I get major muscle fatigue, shoulder fatigue, just within a mile or two. It's exhausting. The other bad thing is that your straps will work themselves loose. So your hip belt, your shoulder straps, they'll slowly work themselves loose over time. So what winds up happening is you're always adjusting your straps, hoisting up your weight. Whenever you've got any kind of significant weight in your pack, that's what's gonna happen. You're gonna be tightening your belt, tightening your shoulder harness, and readjusting every half mile to a mile. This pack has a universal sizing feature. So you just flip this, you flip this down here and you can adjust it. You can see I've got it on extra large here and you can adjust it all the way down to a small. Basically what you're doing is you're lowering your, your shoulder harness. When you take a look at the hip belts, there's not a lot of padding here, very little back support. So the mistake I made when I bought this pack is I bought it online. I bought it from Amazon. It was at the time around $300 and uh, I didn't do a lot of research. It was a mistake on my part. So I hunted with this pack for two seasons. Um, I hauled several animals out with it and I will never use it again. I highly recommend when you're going to buy a pack, you need to try it on. You need to feel it on your body. See how the straps res respond to your shoulders, put some weight in it, walk around, see how it feels on your lower back, see how it tightens up against your hips and your waist. That's really important things. Um, another part of this pack that I really didn't like was the buckle system. When it would press against my waist, it was painful, especially when I had a lot of heavy weight in there. So look for features like that. It's amazing when you pick up a pack and you try it on, most packs will feel great when you're just looking at a pack for the first time. However, when you put weight on your back in that pack, it changes the game. So that's when the functionality and the comfort, that's when it really comes into play. So this is my current pack. This is the Kuyu Ultra 7000 on the Pro Harness. Let me tell you what I love about this pack. Number one is weight. This pack weighs about four and a half pounds, fully equipped. So this is the biggest pack I own and it is the lightest pack I own. So that's an amazing combination. You've got close to two inches of padding on your lower back so you get that support when you've got heavy weight. Your hip belts extend probably a good four to six inches beyond what I had in my other backpacks. Plenty of padding on your shoulder straps. And of course, you've got all the functionality you could ever ask for. So you've got your easy access pocket here in the front for all your items you need to get to quickly. And of course, you have your spotting scope pocket here on the side. And your head pouch has an amazing amount of room. So I just, I love this pack overall. Uh, it expands away from the frame when you're hauling animals out of the backcountry. I highly recommend going after this pack. Now it will set you back a good $500 to $700 depending on the, the accessories you get for it. So you can get a rain cover, you can get your hip belt pockets. So I would say pretty much everything is great about this pack except for price. So if you're looking for a pack on a really tight budget, this is probably not the pack for you. This pack can, is purchased piece by piece. So you have your frame, your shoulder harness, your bag, and then you purchase your accessories, your rain cover, um, your boot for your rifle or your bow, and then you have your hip belt pocket. So they're all purchased separately. So the bill can add up to $700 or so, depending on the equipment that you buy. It is expensive. However, like I said at the beginning of the video, you get what you pay for. And when it comes to a pack, your pack, your boots, your sleep system, those are things that can make or break your trip. So spend the money on the things that make your trip great. If you haven't had a chance to check out the Rockman line of packs, I highly recommend it if you hunt in very wet weather. So if you're hunting maybe on the, in the Northwest, uh, Oregon, Washington, or you're hunting a lot of late season snow, uh, if any kind of wet weather hunting, the Rockman pack system is awesome. So it's 100% waterproof. Not only is the bag waterproof, but each pouch within the backpack is waterproof. Now it is pricey. You're gonna spend about the same as you would on a Kuyu pack to get outfitted. And the major drawback for me is that it's really heavy. So a full system, a large pack full system is about 10 pounds. So that's way too heavy for me because I don't hunt in wet weather. But like I said, 
if you're hunting a lot of wet weather, late season stuff, ha having that waterproof pack um, could be a key for you. So that's a pack I would highly recommend checking out if you do hunt in those conditions. All right, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'd love to hear your opinions. And later on in, this, in the year, we'll be talking about sleep systems, how to streamline your gear to go as lightweight as possible. Uh, we have a boot review coming up where we go through a lot of the boots that we've worn out in the field. So stay tuned for that.